Hello everyone, welcome to our TMP exam question and answer solving session for October. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam. Okay. So out of the five questions that we are going to solve today, the target will be to get all the five out of the five questions correct. However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation okay also if you are preparing for the pmp exam you might want to check out my training courses on udemy and you can also consider to join my youtube membership community all of them are very well reviewed amongst the students like you and i will provide all the details on how you can join the same later on in this video okay so give this video a like get a pen and a paper and let's get started with question number one right so question number one guys the drill will remain the same as per the previous videos. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's get started. The project manager needs to get timely approval for the project management plan from key stakeholders who are not co-located. Okay, the plan is very detailed and there is a high probability of revisions and updates once feedback is received from all the stakeholders so most likely the project is in the planning stage because you are developing the project management plan right and uh, the project manager needs to get approval of the stakeholder to actually move from planning to the execution stage okay now the plan is of course very detailed and there is a high probability of revisions updates etc once the stakeholders have reviewed it okay and provided the feedback back to the project manager okay what is the best course of action for the project manager all right, so let's look at the options one by one. Option A, meet with all the stakeholders for a joint discussion once the plan is sent to them for review. Okay, this can be a possible option. Now you also need to keep in mind that meeting may not be only, let's say face-to-face -face meetings. These can be virtual meetings as well. Okay, so do not make the assumption that the meeting has to be face-to-face. -face, okay, if it is not mentioned otherwise, right? So A could be a possible option. So let's spark A and let's look at option B. Ask stakeholders to review the plan individually and add their comments on a shared document. Okay, uh, this can also be one of the ways in which uh, you can uh, do it or actually collect the feedbacks. But again, going back to the premise of uh, whenever you are faced with a problem, always look for an active solution rather than a passive resolution. Okay, so that is the basic principle with which we solve any PMP style question. Okay, now, of course, let's spark option B and we'll come back to option A and option B. All right, in a second. Let's look at option C. Allocate sections of the plan to stakeholders based on their area of expertise. This is incorrect, right? Because uh, you really can't do that. For example, if a stakeholder is, let's say, uh, proficient in electrical, okay, or ele electrical engineering, uh, that doesn't mean that he will not have any inputs on the mechanical or the civil side of it, right? Let's say, for example, a person is an expert in cybersecurity. That doesn't mean that the person will not understand network architecture or product development, right? So it is a bit pointless and it is a bit siloed in a fashion that if you are asking for uh, only for inputs from the area of expertise, that is not something which will give you a holistic overview of the overall feedback. So option C is definitely incorrect. Let's look at option D. Organize individual meetings with stakeholders based on their availability. Okay, you can do it. Uh, uh, now you're stakeholders are not co-located okay and if you are uh, doing individual meetings of course you need to be working across a 24-hour time zone and uh, based on their availability some stakeholders might not be available for the next two three weeks or even months so probably this is not something which is very very productive so that is why we will eliminate this option as well and primarily with respect to the reason that organizing individual meetings is uh, let's say a bit too far-fetched because you don't know how many stakeholders you are managing so for example if you're managing like 20 stakeholders will you be doing 20 meetings now across a 24-hour time zone possibly not right 
so that is why option d is incorrect so let's come back to option a and option b both of these are plausible options however going back to the basic premise with respect to which we solve any pmp questions in the previous q a videos so and if you have not watched those q a videos i would uh, strongly recommend that you go and watch those q a videos for the last one one and a half years i'm preparing on this channel and uh, all the uh, questions that we solve uh, uh, we try to solve it with respect to logical reasoning rather than uh, any sort of uh, ballpark frameworks okay because frameworks are based on a solid ground of reasoning as well and the reasoning here is whenever you are solving a pmp question always look for options of active resolution rather than a passive resolution however if you look at option b you are asking the stakeholders to review the plan individually which is fine and add their comments on a shared document now they can do it but is it like a really a active resolution probably not right because it's a very passive way of saying to your stakeholders and look i have sent you the project management plan please go through it whatever comments you have uh, please input it in the shared drive uh, as part of a word or a text document and i will go ahead and review it now you are basically uh, not engaging in sort of a dialogue with your stakeholders by doing this um, and of course the stakeholders will now have to write everything explain to you that why he or she has written something that he or she has written you need to do a call with the stakeholders again just to understand whatever is written there on the shared document that does make sense have you understood it correctly as a project manager so those kind of uh, assumptions will come into play if you are reading from a text rather than doing a meeting with the stakeholders for a joint discussion right because that way the dialogue is more active more real time and uh, there is zero chances of assumption because you are really discussing um, over a meeting which is of course a virtual meeting because your uh, stakeholders are not co-located and that way you um, uh, get their inputs and put it into the plan and send it again for review if required you can do another follow-up meeting so that way your uh, sort of uh, problem solving is more active and real time rather than passive so that is why option b may look as a plausible option but if you go with the premise that which we solve every question in this given sessions this is a very passive way of resolving this issue so that is why option b is incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option a now if you are preparing for your pmp exam guys i would suggest that you check out my pmp exam preparation courses on udemy all the courses are very highly rated amongst the students and many pmp aspirants like you have passed their pmp exam with the help of these courses you can and check the student reviews on Udemy and all the links will be provided in the description section of this video in case you are interested to join okay and now let's move on to question number two right so question number two guys the drill will remain the same please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together again please pause the video here if you want to right so let's get started there has been a drop in engagement from one stakeholder due to personal constraints okay understood the project is in execution and the project manager is leading a cross geographic team okay so please note that the project has moved from planning to execution you are seeing a drop in engagement from one of your stakeholders due to some personal constraints from his or her end okay so what should you do as a project manager so let's look at the options one by one option a revisit the project charter with new level of engagement uh, incorrect okay because you have already moved from initiation to planning to execution and of course if you are facing some issues with respect to engagement project charter is probably not the right document to look at or let's say not the right project artifact to look at so this is a very classic uh, case in point where pmi will try to trick you in terms of referring you to a wrong project artifact again we discuss all of these fine nuances in my uh, daily membership posts uh, if you wish uh, you can register uh, for that uh, via the youtube community platform all right however for this uh, option a this is incorrect because project charter does not provide you the level of engagement of stakeholders that is why that is totally out of question let's look at option b look out for options to replace the stakeholders preposterous okay really preposterous you can't do it if you uh, are facing some kind of an issue with one of the stakeholders you just can't go ahead and uh, replace the stakeholder right unless and until you are the boss of the company and you are leading the project yourself and uh, your word is the last word or it's your way of the highway right uh, but generally in a servant leadership scenario that is not the case so that is why option b is uh, totally incorrect let's look at option c update the stakeholder register and then the stakeholder engagement plan okay 
possibly uh, you can do an update on the stakeholder register and then update the stakeholder engagement plan however let's look at option d which is uh, very very close which is mentioning that you need to update only the stakeholder engagement plan now this is where you need to understand the content of the stakeholder register versus the content of the stakeholder engagement plan so the question is does your stakeholder register have something which uh, talks about or which mentions the level of engagement you need from each of your stakeholders now to do that let's look at this uh, sort of uh, screenshot which i have taken from the process group practice guide so please go back and refer to your process group practice guide the project artifact section and if you go and review the stakeholder register contents you will see that in the stakeholder register you actually do a stakeholder classification which is uh, whether your stakeholders are internal or external whether they have an impact how much interest you need from them or how much interest they have in your project whether their level of involvement is uh, downward which is really the case in point here because their level of involvement is downward uh, it is not sideward they are not being aloof but probably they are like uh, stopping to participate etc etc and any other classification model so this is the uh, section which you need to be aware of to go back to your uh, answer choice and then you clearly know that you need to update the stakeholder register first and then you update the stakeholder engagement plan you do not only update the stakeholder engagement plan because that doesn't provide you a very clear picture of the this uh, classification right because this classification happens in the stakeholder register itself and that is the target classification you need to have now with respect to the engagement plan you can go ahead and select uh, action which will bring that stakeholder back to their baseline engagement right so that is why uh, option c is the correct answer here option d is incorrect because it doesn't capture let's say uh, importance of stakeholder register in terms of classifying a stakeholder with respect to their engagement and involvement and that is why option d is partially correct not totally incorrect okay it's partially correct but you have to select the best answer choice from the four options provided to you so that is why option d is incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option c now before we move on to question number three guys i would suggest that you check out my membership community on youtube as part of your pmp exam preparation i share daily posts on pmp exam tips tricks and strategies via this platform okay and also if you are a tier 2 member you get a chance to speak with me one on one over a live session twice every month okay it's a monthly subscription based service okay and you can cancel anytime you want to all the links will be provided in the description section of this video so please do check it out okay and now let's move on to question number three okay so let's move on to question number three the drill will remain the same please pause the video here and try to solve the question before we solve this together right so let's get started it has been observed that the team members are low on motivation okay after every product demo exercise so if you don't know product demo exercise this is a ceremony which you generally do in agile projects where you review your uh, partially completed product with your customer or end user okay so please go back and study the details of product demo from your agile textbook or whichever course you are following okay so feedback from the stakeholder is uh, constantly causing concerns within the team so that is why the team members are low on motivation after every exercise okay so for this reason the team does not prepare well for the product demo so they don't really look forward to this product demo meetings because of course there is some conflict that's happening in every exercise and uh, the interaction between the team and the stakeholders is very very superficial so that is not really helping the overall sprint or the agile uh, part of the project you are in in this scenario okay so what action you should take as the project manager okay so let's look at the options one by one review the stakeholder matrix and identify difficult stakeholders again go back to question number one where we discussed active resolution versus passive resolution now remotely you can say that yes this is okay you can do it but but will it give some sort of an indication that you are trying to solve something actively probably not okay you can review you can identify difficult stakeholders uh, so what okay are you in a position to change your stakeholders probably not right so option a is incorrect okay let's look at option b verify that the story points are suitable enough for the team to work on during the sprint 
this is also incorrect because this is like totally far fetched you can work on those story points when you are doing your backlog refinement you can uh, discuss the suitability of the story points with respect to the capability of your team and do all those stuff but what is the problem statement here guys so you need to be very clear with the problem statement in the question scenario and what is the question asking you to solve okay so that is important so the question is not asking you to solve some complexity within the story points or some conflict which your team is having whilst they are in a sprint with those story points and things like that right so it is typically asking you to solve a motivation issue with your team with respect to some of your stakeholders in a product demo exercise or a product demo meeting okay is why option b is incorrect because that doesn't give me any active or any uh, direct level of uh, confidence that yes if i do some kind of a review of the story points probably uh, this kind of conflict between my stakeholders and my team will resolve in the product demo exercise that is too far fetched right so that is why option b is incorrect and i hope none of you have selected option b as well let's look at option c counsel the team to be more confident with their work okay and communicate proactively with stakeholders possibly uh, there could be a loss in communication here so you as the project manager need to counsel your team and uh, uh, mention to them that look guys if you do not communicate with your stakeholders whilst you are in a sprint uh, or in a uh, let's say feature upgrade exercise or a feature cycle that you are doing if you call the client directly um, at a product demo so probably the stakeholder here is not at all primed with respect to whatever updates he or she is expecting and of course there will be a conflict so please keep them involved uh, with respect to uh, the the features that you are building uh probably send them sort of a pre read or send them sort of a previous uh, kind of uh, uh, an update on what to expect during the product demo so that at least uh, there are no surprises when the actual meeting is happening so these kind of preparations could be done as a pre kind of uh, uh, a preparation for the actual meeting right so that way the communication is much more uh, strong and, and much more naturally flowing so option c is probably correct and also with respect to uh, that servant leadership attitude you can also mention your team that look guys you need not to be demotivated these kind of conflicts do happen uh, at the end of the day a customer is the king we need to match their expectations as much as possible and as much as reasonably practicable right so those kind of counseling uh, you can do as sort of a project manager for this project right so option c looks like a strong option to me however let's look at option d first before we select option c what does option d say it says that meet with the stakeholders to identify the root cause of their feedback and then work with them for resolution this is um, interesting because uh, what it is saying is you totally don't care of your team you meet with the stakeholders to identify the root cause that hey uh, my team is uh, very demotivated please come and meet me and tell me why are you uh, making the life of my team difficult right so that is a bit absurd and work with them for resolution so what is your team doing here uh, sitting on the fence and looking the project manager uh, solving things for them okay uh, so next time when such kind of a problem arises your team will uh, totally be sitting on the fence again and saying that okay mr project manager or uh, mrs project manager or miss project manager please go ahead and solve this issue for me because last time you also solved this issue without us so i hope uh, you don't need us to solve an issue okay so please go ahead and solve it with the stakeholders and tell us what to do and we will do it so that is a very very uh, let's say a non ideal scenario which you do not uh, want uh, to be in as a project manager right so option d is that is why totally incorrect because you are meeting with the stakeholders yourself you are solving the issue yourself where is your team here right so this totally falls apart with respect to the principles of servant leadership so that is why option d is incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option c which is to counsel your team to be more confident and communicate proactively with the stakeholders and that is the sort of best action you can take to to address your problem statement in this scenario right so the correct answer is option c now before we move on to question number 4 guys make sure you do subscribe to my channel pmp with ray for more such videos like this for your pmp exam preparation okay your support really helps educational channels like this to grow on youtube and now Let's move on to question number four. Right, so let's move on to question number four, guys. So this is a multi-select question. So these are sort of the medium to high difficulty level question, which you will find in your PMP exam. So you need to choose uh, two options from the five options that are being provided as part of this question. Okay, so please pause the video here. Try to solve it before we take this together. So let's get started. The product owner has expressed concerns with the project manager regarding their availability. for any meetings so the product owner is making the project manager aware that uh, they might not be available for the project 
at the moment okay so there is a bit of a concern with respect to the availability of the product owner so the request is to include the product owner only for the meetings where necessary okay so of course probably the person is getting a lot of conflicts where there are multiple meeting invites being sent to him or her right so the request is to include the product owner only for the meetings which are absolutely necessary for the product owner to attend as part of the agile or the sprint that is happening at the moment as part of the scenario okay so this is due to the reason that the product owner is now being pulled into multiple agile projects there you go right so that is a very valid assumption that we can make which of the two meetings the project manager could deprioritize okay very important it is asking for which of these meetings can the project manager deprioritize for the product owner so so putting it in other words you need to identify two options from these five options which are being provided where it would be okay if the product owner would not attend these meetings okay however conversely you need to be aware that which of these agile ceremonies or which of these meetings is absolutely must for the product owner to attend okay so let's look at the options one by one option a daily stand-ups okay now what is uh, the intent of daily stand-up right so the intent of daily stand-up is to look at the last 24 hours uh, and plan for the next 24 hours okay so this is the sort of a direction setting meeting that happens every day as part of your agile project now typically the product owner do not attend these meetings because that is from more of the product management side however daily standups is more from the project management side so there is a very clear difference on what is product management versus what is project management okay so that is why option a is a very plausible option that it would be okay for the product owner to not attend the daily standup because typically the daily standup meeting is chaired by the project manager and the main attendees of the meeting is the project manager along with the core project of the sprint team okay so option a seems like a plausible option retrospective okay that is incorrect because retrospective is something where you look at your overall performance of a sprint or an iteration and you take the learnings out of it this is where product management information or product management input is very important because there might be scenarios where there was a problem that was faced in the sprint or an iteration which uh, the product manager or the product owner could feedback into so that at least that doesn't happen in the next sprint or the next iteration because the issues that are discussed in retrospectives uh, can often happen because probably the feature of the product was not developed or understood correctly or probably the backlog refinement was not done properly because of course backlog refinement will need the product owner to be present and of course if you are going through these terms and terminologies of agile i would strongly recommend that you go back to your textbooks and study these because if you don't know what is a retrospective if you don't know what is a backlog refinement it will be impossible for you to answer this question correctly okay so please go back and build your base or build your foundation with respect to these basic agile terms and terminologies you can watch few of my youtube videos as well on agile because i have actually decoded these uh, kind of uh, terms uh, in a very uh, easy to understand manner in those videos so i would recommend that you go and watch those videos as well right so retrospective is incorrect backlog refinement for the same reason is incorrect because when you do backlog refinement you need the product owner to be present otherwise who will decide that which feature to take the priority and which feature to not take the priority, right? Because then the execution part is with the project manager, but this prioritization that, okay, feature A is more important to execute than feature B, or story point A is more important to execute than story point B, that comes from the product owner. That doesn't come from the project manager because the responsibility of the project manager is execution, okay? Not to prioritize story points for a agile or a sprint so that is why backlog refinement is also incorrect product sme reviews sme means subject matter expert so you need to be aware of these kind of uh, small abbreviations uh, do not expect that the pmi will explain these abbreviations because because these abbreviations are generally very common lingo in project management okay so subject matter expert okay so product subject matter expert reviews of course you are doing a product review guys so you need to have the product manager or the product owner there right so that is why option d is also incorrect team performance reviews again by default this option is correct because uh, in team performance review the team basically reports to the project manager generally in an agile or a sprint scenario the team reporting or the line manager of the team is not the product owner it is the project manager 
the project manager manages the team in terms of their performance in terms of their career in terms of their uh, day to day needs and wants etc etc okay so the team performance reviews is something done with the project manager not with the product owner so that is why option e is also correct so the correct answer to this question is option a and option e again it is very important for you to understand why i rejected option b why i rejected option c and why i rejected option d because if you don't have that kind of reasoning and also if you do not understand what is the intent of a retrospective and who joins the retrospective what is the intent of a backlog refinement what is the intent of product sme review etc etc you will never be able to answer this question correctly so please go back and study these terms and terminologies from my youtube videos or from the textbook or the online course that you are following for agile and that way you will be able to understand why it is okay for the product manager not to attend the daily stand up why it is okay for the product manager or the product owner here not to attend the team performance reviews because these meetings are optional for the product owner to attend okay so that is why the correct answer to this question is option a and option e i hope you are finding this exercise helpful right remember the target is to get all the five out of the five questions correct however the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct, right? So here comes the fifth and the final question. Right, so question number five, guys, the drill will remain the same. Uh, this is the final one. So please try to uh, answer it attentively. Okay, so please read the question and try to answer it before we take this together. Please pause the video here whilst you are solving the question yourself. Right, so let's get started. An organizational agile transformation project is forecasted to get delayed due to concerns expressed by the design and development team. So probably an organization here is um, executing an agile transformation project, which uh, typically means that when a, a team is transitioning from predictive uh, to hybrid to agile, okay, that entire transformation, these are generally referred to as agile transformation project. And that is why the transformation is happening, right? From predictive to agile, okay? Now there are some concerns expressed by the design and development team who probably it's safe to assume that they were uh, working from a predictive or a hybrid model and they have some concerns in the agile way of working okay and that is why the concerns have been raised the request is to review the terms and conditions of the transformation program to make the same more suitable to meet the needs of the team so the transformation team needs to listen to the feedback of the design and development team and make suitable changes uh, with the terms and conditions of this transformation project okay of course, uh, there you go, which currently operates on a predictive model, okay? So how can the project manager respond to this request? So that is the scenario. Let's look at the options one by one that you as a project manager of this agile transformation project, you need to take into account the feedback provided by the design and development team who currently operates in a predictive and they are expressing some concerns with the shift from the current operating model to the agile model and how you as the project manager can respond to this request. Okay, go back to the basic premise of question number one. Uh, that uh, whatever option you choose guys please choose an option which is more proactive uh, problem solving rather than a reactive or a passive problem solving let's say okay so let's look at the options one by one option a work with the project sponsor to reprioritize the backlog totally pointless what will you do by reprioritizing backlog here okay and why do you need to involve the project sponsor it Involving the project sponsor is escalation and that needs to be avoided in 99.99% of the scenarios. So that is why option A is totally incorrect because uh, A, it is escalation and B, it is uh, doing something which uh, doesn't give you the confidence that, okay, it will take you one step towards solving the problem at hand, okay? which is addressing these concerns expressed by the design and development team. And these concerns are with respect to the shift from the predictive model to the agile model, okay? Option B perform a 5y analysis to identify gaps in the terms and conditions okay uh, let's park this option for now you might uh, reason with me saying that ray i'm doing like a yy analysis which is identifying the root cause gaps terms and conditions etc etc okay we will come back to it in a second so let's hold this option for now let's look at option c update the risk management plan with the new schedule delay risk okay that is a bit too far-fetched okay First of all, uh, if you get a new risk in your project, you do not update the risk management plan. You update the risk register. Okay, so that is why option C is incorrect. And secondly, the schedule has not got delayed already. Okay, so there is a risk. Of course, you understand that there could be delays. Okay, now 
Now, of course, there might be a cost risk associated with this. There might be a quality risk associated with this risk, right? So all these risks needs to go in the risk register, okay? Not in the risk management plan, okay? So that is the reason uh, option C is also incorrect. And also it doesn't give me the confidence that, okay, uh, this delay, whether this delay is having more impact on the cost or having more impact on the schedule. We don't know, right? So that is why these kind of questions are still open-ended if I consider option C. That is why option C is incorrect. So let's look at option D, which is to review the risk register. Okay, this is the correct artifact to review. Okay, to check for relevant risk response for the situation. Okay, now this is very interesting because it is asking you not to go ahead and directly start updating which is action okay and if you remember in many of our youtube videos over the last few months we have always talked about this principle of uh, review before you take an action on it okay now the action might be to update the risk register that's an action but before that please review it probably it has already been highlighted as a possible risk during the planning stage and the risk register was already updated with a suitable risk response plan who knows right you don't know so you first need to review this risk and see that whether this risk had already been captured as part of the risk register because risks are captured as part of risk registers not as part of risk management plans and if you have that risk already captured there might always be there a risk response for the same as well right so please don't reinvent the wheel because it has already been discussed already been agreed upon that this will be the risk response if this risk actually materializes so your problem is solved right so you need not to go and re-intellectualize uh, something which has already been uh, documented properly so option d looks like a very very good choice to me now if i go back to option b guys this is a pointless exercise of doing a root cause analysis to identify the gaps in terms and conditions because you need to respond to this request of this design and development team in a sensible way which will give them enough confidence that you are actually trying to help them in terms of incorporating their issues in the overall project scenario right where does 5y analysis happen it generally happens when you have identified a superficial cause of a problem and then you are trying to go to the root cause of a problem as simple as that it takes you from the superficial cause of a problem to the root cause of a problem right now what is the problem here the problem here is there is uh, some gaps uh, in terms of the terms and conditions uh, and uh, the design and development team is asking you to make it a bit more suitable for them uh, in terms of the way they are operating in a predictive model at the moment now your project is forecasted to get delayed okay that is uh, something which you need to address okay and of course doing a 5y analysis uh, for this is a bit of a overkill honestly speaking right because in the end uh, performing a 5y analysis to identify gaps in terms and conditions okay that might be your risk response plan okay uh, that might not be your first point of action okay because again going back to this review before act okay this overall premise that you first need to review something before you take an action the risk response plan might have been that okay if your design and development team expresses concern please go ahead and do a 5y analysis that is perfectly fine but but please take into account that you have to review that first because that action might have already been captured as part of your risk register in the planning stage and that is why option b again falls apart with respect to this uh, uh, framework of review before act and that is why option d is correct because actually you are reviewing something okay before you are taking an action which uh, might be doing a 5y analysis which might be uh, updating the risk register with this new risk response okay that can also be another option or can also be another way out which uh, uh, could be uh, possible but whatever you do you need to review the correct artifact first and the correct artifact is the risk register and not the risk management plan right so the correct answer to this question is option d so that's the end of the quiz guys let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score okay i'd be very very interested to know that also if you have scored less please do not be demotivated okay you just need a bit more preparation do a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps and you are able to fix those on time okay thank you for watching and i will see you again next month with another session on pmp exam practice questions and answers have a nice day and bye for now